So in this video we're going to construct a blade antenna for the 5.8 GHz frequencies more to uh, be used with uh, a quadcopter or model aircraft for FPV video. Now instead of just duplicating what we did with the 2.4 GHz blade I thought I'd construct one with uh, six blades which is uh, a little bit tricky when uh, you're dealing with such a smaller antenna and you can just see with these two side by side the size difference between those frequencies. So let's get the tools out and I'll show you the methods that I use to actually create this uh, little antenna and uh, hopefully you'll be able to reproduce it and get some great results on your FPV. So to make things as easy as possible what you actually want to do is measure off a quarter wavelength on a piece of uh, quite rigid sheet. This is a piece of aluminium sheet. You can use thin wood, thin plastic, something like that but also needs to be quite rigid and uh, I've measured across its width here and it's exactly 9.6 millimeters in length so one quarter wavelength and what I'm going to do I'm going to use this to measure most of my bends etc on this uh, antenna and it'll just make it a lot easier than actually marking out with a ruler each time and the copper wire I'm using for the elements is actually 21 SWG um, you don't really want to go any thicker than this because um, it'll make it extremely hard to make the elements with any degree of accuracy and also uh, any thinner it'll make them too delicate unless you're going to cover them of course but uh, 21 SWG seems to be uh, just about right so let's crack on with making this antenna so I've cut a short length off to make it easier to work with this is around 80 millimeters long and uh, what I'm actually going to do for my first bend is just guesstimate it make it uh, longer than the uh, wavelength we're actually looking for so I'm going to put a bend in about there. So next I'm going to take my little metal measuring tool and I'm going to butt it up against this bend that we just guesstimated here and we're measuring on the inside so hold it flush then get some cutters, butt it up to the side and then we've got our first wavelength there and uh, the reason I'm doing it that way is because the thickness of the actual copper wire although this is quite thin um, the actual uh, measurements we're using at 5.8 even the width of this copper wire itself could knock us out of center frequency so what I'm doing is I'm measuring doing the measurements for all this on the inside so we're taking into account the thickness of this copper wire so on the inside of this antenna is all going to be spot on center frequency so next we take our needle nose pliers and I'm using these again it's got a nice big flat surface area here so we're, now we're going to use the shim again measuring on the inside okay butt it up so we've got the right length and then we put another bend in there try and keep it nice and straight so next for our third bend bend up so we're actually going to complete the square of the actual element so I've just pulled it apart a little bit so I can get my measuring tool and my wire cutters in here and I'm butting up against this final leg it is fiddly get my clippers in nice and flush and clip so you should end up with a square shape like that so now that we've got those two elements finished we're going to make two more elements but slightly different this time again I'm going to guesstimate a bend in there and these ones are going to be two L-shaped elements so again use our cutting tool We've got one L there and we'll just make a second one and again you can see how quickly you can measure off and cut the uh, actual elements for an antenna like this by making something like this it really is a useful tool so once you've got your elements to this stage what you're going to need to do is bring the ends of the elements down to a quarter wavelength so use your measuring tool again and you want the gap to be one quarter wavelength on all these elements 
and try not to use your fingers by themselves to try and bend them because you will end up getting a bow in the straight legs here so use some needle nose pliers and just keep bending it slightly until you get the desired gap and with these elements as well you may have to bend them out slightly before you actually bend these in so again do it slowly using your needle nose pliers try and keep them as straight as possible and no bends in the middle there so I've actually finished bending my elements now I've got them all straight as I possibly can using my pliers and uh, the gap between the top and the bottom here is actually a quarter wavelength but uh, one last thing I want to do is actually get my Dremel tool and uh, flatten the surface here of this top bend on both these two elements before I actually move on to soldering. Now I'm going to use my Dremel tool but you could use a bit of uh, emery paper on a flat surface and rub it a few times just to get that flat spot at the top. So I've got two flat spots at the top of these elements now and hopefully when I actually solder them together you won't have so much of a gap between them, they'll all uh, interlock a lot better. So I'm actually using a blob of blue tack here to hold the elements in place while I solder them and uh, you want to be quite quick with your soldering iron because heat will travel down these elements and turn this into a, a mushy goo so uh, once you've got them in place be quick with the soldering iron get the tin flowing just long enough and then uh, remove the heat So I've finished positioning my elements now and I'm quite happy with them. I'm now ready to actually add some solder on the top here to have them all in place. And uh, as you can see there, they're all lined up pretty well. So I'm ready to solder them up, getting plenty of solder on the end of my tip here. And I want to do this quite quickly because uh, I don't want to melt the blue tack too much. So get in there and flow some solder into that join make sure you get plenty of solder flowing on all those joints and any little bits of blue tack left on these legs just get another piece of blue tack and just uh, gently remove it trying not to bend the elements themselves so I'm now going to move on to the coax for this antenna and I've got a length of uh, RG316 coax here, it's about 100mm long and I've uh, already crimped on an SMA connector here at the base and uh, what I also need is a piece of uh, metal tubing that I can solder to and this has come from one of those cheap telescopic antennas I've shown you before in previous videos really good source for tubing to make dipole antennas and I'm going to need a length of this at one quarter wavelength and of course I'm going to use my little measuring tool here to measure it off because that's going to fit as a shroud on the coax and it's going to be soldered on and that'll be our ground plane and uh, the elements that we've just been producing will be our main driven element at the top here so I've cut my metal tube down to one quarter wavelength here and I've also got a little bit of emery paper and rubbed off some of that chrome around there and a little bit on the inside just so we can solder onto this. Uh, the coax itself I've cut down here to uh, expose that outer braid of the coax and I've removed some of the outer braid as well because we don't want all of it and I'm going to feed my tube down to about here then bring it back up and pack some of this outer braid down into there and then flow it with some solder. I've made sure I've got plenty of length here on the inner core because that actually wants to be cut down to a quarter wavelength. So I've got my uh, metal tube in place there and I've packed all that uh, outer braid of the coax down into it so now I'm just going to flow a little bit of solder in there. And you want to take your time adding the solder, add a little bit, move it round and let it cool down because you don't want to melt this uh, inner dielectric of course. Now that we've soldered our tube in place, I've got a piece of plastic straw here that I've uh, cut down to a quarter wavelength and I'm going to use that as a guide to actually trim away the dielectric here to expose the inner core because uh, we want one quarter wavelength here to attach our elements to so I'm going to cut that away and solder it up so we can attach those but I also want to leave a small amount there, about one millimetre of the dielectric to act as an insulator to uh, keep the actual ground plane tube in here 
separate from the elements so there's no risk of touching and uh, also what I'll do I'll probably put in a little bit of hot glue or some epoxy putty there to uh, actually uh, make sure that they don't touch at all and add a little bit of strength to the antenna so I've finished preparing the coax here so I've got this exposed one quarter wavelength very small amount of dielectric there to act as an insulator big blob of solder here on the uh, braid in order to solder on our bottom legs I'm going to put some solder flow some solder on those bottom legs and then attach the bottom legs to the base here and then this part this top part of the uh, coax here I'm going to solder onto the top part of the legs here where we've already soldered so hopefully it will all come together So that's the bottom leg soldered on, so a little bit of solder in there to uh, finish off the connection. So that's the antenna all soldered up and finished, but uh, one last thing I want to do before actually painting this is put a little bit of epoxy putty around here so uh, it adds a little bit more stability to the uh, top part of the antenna and also we don't risk actually bending it over and these elements bridging across to the ground plane tube in here and then of course our antenna won't work. So I've just put that little bit of putty there, like I said, you can use hot glue but uh, this epoxy putty really does uh, a much neater job of things, it's really strong as well. So I hope you found this video useful and as a side note, unless you're pushing quite a few milliwatts through your FPV gear, you're not really going to see a big difference between a six bladed antenna like this one and a four bladed antenna the four bladed antenna is probably a lot easier to make than this six blade one but i just wanted to show you uh, something different in the video instead of duplicating what i did in the 2.4 gigahertz blade so like i said i hope you found this video useful and uh, you have a go at constructing one of these yourself if you did please give it a thumbs up as always and drop a comment below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one